starting to move towards fall, definitely getting closer to a freeze. I don't think we've had an actual frost here at this landscape, maybe in part because we've got so many different high tunnels and ponds and little thermal battery systems, but that's beside the point. It's getting cooler, and one of the jobs to work on in the fall, among many other things, is to think about the chicken yard, and in particular the winter run, and getting that back online so it's really functional for the hens. In the spirit of full transparency, this is what it looks like right now. Definitely not the most proud looking space. Uh, this was, I, I will link here to the original uh, design and build of this structure in case this is not familiar to you, but this is basically uh, a winter run, a space where the hens can be out of the elements. This is a very short commute from their protected coop area, and so in the winter they can come into here. It keeps the compost from freezing. It's worked for years. Right now it's in a little bit of a raw state, so please pardon the appearance, but I think it'll be helpful to see how it evolves uh, over time. I've got this bag of alfalfa meal that the hens didn't like. We're going to add that to the soil somewhere else. We've got these pallets, which I'll talk about in a moment. But the issue at the moment is a few things. One, we need to clean up uh, some old debris in here, little plastic flecks and the like, get these uh, sidewall boards out of the way and organized, and really reassess what's happening with the way we do the sidewall. The basic idea of being able to have uh, poly that's on in the winter months to keep the heat and uh, the compost accumulating in here is reasonable, but plastic it's on its own is just not durable enough. You can see where it's gotten punched through over time. There's little rips in there, and then when those rips start to form and uh, expand, then material falls through and you end up with plastic in the compost, which we have to pick out later. Before I can really start getting into drawing material into here, so we cache bulk organic matter. Those are lovage uh, trimmings from plants we're shipping. There's some old delicata squash from a local organic farm. There's leaves, carbon. All that gets cached in front and then moved in. But before we can start then taking it and putting it into the composting pipeline, which is this right here, we really want this to be in a better way. You can see how tattered this has gotten over time. So I went to a local fitness store where they have mountains of these pallets. They're particularly long. These are over seven and a half feet. In fact, this is what we built our firewood shed out of. They're free and they're happy to have you take them. There's one that's a funky size and then the rest that are pretty uniform. And my plan is to tidy things up by having these be our side walls that I can append poly onto, either batten it onto or just uh, staple it and then rip it off later on. But there'll be a little bit of a backer to receive material. And I think if I start on this side over here, I can take off the old poly that's there, kind of clean some things up, get the poly that's in the compost out, and start putting some of these runners, these new free, simple um, pallets along the side. I think a lot of folks that watch this channel will already know this, but an important thing to be aware of, if you're picking up pallets, you always want to make sure that it says somewhere HT, heat treated, which means that this is um, wood that in order to be more resistant from rot and from insects and things, has been kiln dried, if I'm remembering or understanding that correctly. What it has not been treated with is a chemical. I think MB is what you'd see if it was some sort of weird chemical process to make it antifungal and anti-bug. But for any sort of farming stuff, even for infrastructure, most pallets say HT, but you really want to verify that you see that. So a little heads up if you're new to scouring for pallets for different projects. It's amazing pulling the poly back that had been folded over. This is compost that sat here since last winter. And it's beautiful material. See in the corner here where some rodents and stuff chewed away at some of the plastic that was here. Yeah, not ideal. So I'm going to pick through. As I go up, I'll pluck the plastic out so we can get that out and into the garbage. Probably what I need to do is actually dig out some of this. I don't know if I have the bandwidth for it today, so I will just be getting rid of the old plastic. What I can reuse, I will reuse. Cut away the tattered stuff and recycle it and try to get a little bit more of a permanent and assertive way of holding material than just plastic alone. That's a little bit wonky, but it's not too, too bad. I like the idea of it being pitched slightly inward at the top, which means that as the compost is being scooped away, it wants to fall away from it rather than at an angle where it's always laying against the wood. This will get covered with poly, but first what I need to do is figure out how to bind it into the framing of the structure. I think I'm just going to lean into our friend the fencing wire. We've got spools of this stuff laying around. In fact, we have some leftovers from some 
metal bound hay bales and I think I might use that to wrap around the wooden structure and twist tie that in. That's as good as a screw for the kind of material and scenario we're working on in here. We tend to recycle this metal wire. Sometimes uh, hay bales that we get come with colorful binding twine but a lot of times they come with this metal wire and this is about 14 gauge. It's kind of nice to use it for projects like this. It's free and why waste it? We'll use these for other projects like tying up bundles of plants in burlap sacks for local customers this fall. It's neat. Waste hay that folks are getting rid of and even the binding is useful in a couple different ways. And as messy as it is, this will tidy up as I go, but as messy as it is right now, it's a good reminder that always these sorts of projects are really affirming for the hens and the little baby roosters. Uh, pleasures and delights. They're in here pecking away at all this novel opened up stuff. So anytime you have a project where you want to redo it or improve it or start from the ground up, just know that your chickens will be very appreciative that your first iteration was a failure and it's time to upgrade. For them it's just all fun. Very rudimentary but with a standard pair of pliers that can cut wire, can twist through, doesn't have to be crazy strong, just enough. I got one little tag there and one tag down there. It's not like we're working with goats and sheep in here. Uh, but so far, this one pallet's pretty well knit into the frame for a very, very free and easy and already a waste stream material. So I'm going to pull the rest of the poly down this line and figure out laying the rest of these in. I've got scrap lumber all over the place here, so I'm going to lay down a board of black locust first to receive the pallets and keep them from sinking too much. planted some seaberry on the outside of this tunnel a little ways back. So this is Titan in front of me, which is a lovely female cultivar. And seaberry has a tendency to want to sucker. And so if you can imagine, it found the fertility on the inside of this space. And in the process of cleaning out this corner, I came across incredible obscene mat of roots. So there are these horizontal runners, kind of hard to figure out what's going on here, but they're these runners that came off the main plant. And then all of these shoots that the chickens have been scratching nonstop so I'm going to put these, I'm going to heal them in to some soil this fall. I think in the spring, if they survive the winter, which they should, should be able to plant these out in a nursery bed and get a whole bunch of cloned Titan seaberry runners. It's interesting to see it's a nitrogen fixing nutrient building plant and it really would not mind unlimited nutrient too. Very, very accurate and perfection oriented cut happening here, as you can see order to fit in that five foot span that remains in that corner. These I think are seven and a half feet, so pretty long. I'm pretty sure I missed my calling as a professional carpenter. I can see the the measurement that I did. I was so accurate you can barely see any space between these gorgeous. Look at that. Barely any space. Now we need that in order to have good ventilation. Uh, that's the reason for that. This was a funky one-off pallet that had more bars going across it in a slightly different dimension, a little bit wider than these. I think these are 32 inches wide. So cut off in the long dimension, I can put in one on this side and one on the other side as a nice sturdy backer for the start. I think I'm going to cover these in poly for now and bank uh, some logs up against them to start protecting them and then revisit later on in the season with some scrap roof metal to really reinforce over the poly to let it preserve for a bit longer but that feels like a nice start to this flow i just need to tie that one in with some old hay bale twines as well pretty simple here just the t50 stapler being used to tag down this poly i'm just going to reuse the same poly we have i know i could do it with newer stuff and then it would look a lot fancier and fresher and that's great for the video but it's not great for the ethics of it so we're just using the same poly the spots on the bottom that have been really torn to shreds will take away and then at some point i'm going to start keeping an eye out for more off cuts of wood that can go up against there at the bottom before we start piling compost there. Got these segments that we're using to create taller sidewalls on this side that I might use for now to take the poly as it comes down and pin it and also protect from the scratching and the pecking of the hens. A simple rough draft and it could use some refinements, but that'll be once there's some soil banked up against that board on the bottom, a way to keep the poly from flopping around in the breeze and we're going to be building up during the winter. We'll be building compost right up to the very top of this anyway and letting it angle out in this direction. But when it's very low, it's just a way to keep things protected down there. For a little bit of time and zero money, I'm pleased with how this is working. 
uh, could be a lot more refined and delicate and thoughtful, and I get that, but it seems really functional and basic and good enough. Reusing the plastic, putting these skirting boards at the bottom to reduce the amount of wear and tear on the plastic by the hens, and this little flap on the top, which looks like a very, very sloppy cut, is actually a little bit intentional with the idea that in the winter, if we need to ventilate the space, I should be able to pull these back along the whole line and let some air come in, some fresh air. We can actually overheat the space with the composting process. So all along through here, the poly is pushed in, but can be pulled out. And my plan is in the fall to ram a bunch of oak and maple leaves to pin that poly down in a more strong way uh, in this crevice and then hold the option of opening it up later on. I think that's all I have bandwidth for in the project today is this side. So I'm going to get some compost in there, see how they enjoy it, and then we'll clean up the rest of this in another video soon and do a little bit of like a one week review sort of thing. I still have the pallets I need to do this side. It's a mess over there, but the chicken yard tends to be a mess. It's functional enough, it's good enough for them, but I'd like it to be a little bit more tidy and definitely needing it to be uh, buttoned up in a better way for winter. So we'll share more notes as that unfolds. This side's still a mess and needs to be redone, but what I can be doing is digging the compost from this side, which was where I was starting to dump the fall and winter run, and take some material out of the middle walkway, which is where we dump raw material coming in, and start the pipeline on the west side, which is now organized. So we've got the rawest stuff, the coarsest stuff right there, and then on down the line, and I'm using more finished compost to pin those boards in position, and I think it's going to be a nice looking thing. So. Anyway, that's our first iteration. It's this wormy now coming into the mid-fall. I can't wait to see how much red wiggler action we can facilitate in here in the winter if we do things right, maintain the right humidity, the right moisture content in the media, and the right temperature, and keep the hens away from picking it all apart. We should be able to have a straight-up red wiggler worm bin in the northeast. Stay tuned.